the angular dimensioning tools. To get to those tools, they are in your main modeout toolbar. If you go down to your dimensioning tools, hold your left mouse button down. The third option is your dimension angular. But before we do that, we're going to go up to the task, MoDOT Design CAD Standards, General Annotation, and we're going to select the one that says Dimension Small. That way it loads up all of our dimension attributes for arrowheads and text and all that other good stuff. So we're going to select it first so it loads up that proper dimension style. And now we're, instead of using the Element Dimensioning tool, we're going to go back to our main MoDOT toolbar, go to your Dimensioning Tools, and we'll select Dimension Angular. Inside here you got your alignments that we've shown before whether you want it with the view or true or drawing if You want to change your location to something else you can do that That's all depend on what type of what option of dimensioning that you're wanting to do We're just going to leave it set to the defaults just to show how the tool works And then down below here you have this expansion portion of it to where you can turn off your start extension your end extension or if you want to turn off and on some other stuff inside here Depending on which tool that you use, will determine what option that you have below here. But we're going to leave these alone for the example because we're just going to show how the tool works. The first tool is the angle size. So we'll select it. It says down in your status bar down below here, it says select star dimension. So we're going to snap to this endpoint right here. Now it says enter point on axis. We're going to use as our, this as our access point, so I'll snap to it. Now you define where you want your dimension to end at. And I'm going to use this point right here to end the dimension. Now you'll move it up and down depending on where you want to place it at. Whether you want it below it, or if you want the dimension looking like this, or if you want it looking otherwise. So I'll come out here and left click to drop it off. And if I want to keep going, I can go to the next dimension, but you'll notice that it's going from the previous point that I just selected. So if I want to go to this point now, I could do that. I could snap to it, place that, or if I wanted to, I could keep going, or I can just simply right click to reset the tool, and I'm finished. So that's the first one, angle size. If I go to the next option, is angle location. So if I do the same thing, I'll identify this as my start point, left click to accept it, use this as my point of access, I'll snap to it, I'll go to this point right here to place the dimension for the end point, I'll drag it up, depending on where I want to place it at, I'll left click to place it, and now if I wanted to, I could right click to reset it, or if I want to go to the next one, I could go to this point right here. But on this one here, it's going from the beginning point that I selected from the very beginning of my first dimension instead of going from this point now. So that's the difference between those two dimension options that we're showing here. So if I go to this endpoint right here, I'll snap to it, I'll left click to accept it. Like I said, I could keep going if I, if I wanted to, but I'm going to right click to end the tool and now I'm finished. I'm going to pan over to demonstrate the next two. The third one in your options here is angle between lines. So I'll select it. And on this one here, all you simply do is select the two lines that you want to dimension. So I'll left click on the first line. I'll left click on the second line. Now, depending on where I want to place it at, we'll determine where, I, where I'm going to end it at. And this one here, I'm going to place it actually in between right here. So I'll left click to accept it. And now I'm finished. Or if I want it to go the other way, I can simply left click on the first one, left click on the second one. You'll notice that there is no extension lines on this particular one. If that's what you want, we'll just leave those set as is. If you did want them, you know, simply come over here and turn those on, and you can add those two there. Like I said, it's optional depending on what situation that you have. So I'll go ahead and place that dimension, and now I'm finished. So that's the option for angle between lines in your dimensioning tools. The last two is arc size and arc stacked. If you click on the arc size, we'll click on it. First of all, you identify where you want to start the dimension at. 
I'll just use this as my start point to start the dimension. Now it says select dimension endpoint. I'll use this one as my endpoint. Move it up or down depending on where I want to place it at. I'll click drop it off. If I want to keep going, if I had another point that I need to go to, I could do that. This one here, I don't have that option. So I'll just simply right click the end, end the tool and I'm finished. I'm going to go ahead and do an undo and I'll demonstrate the last one which is arc stacked. So I'll do the same thing. I'll identify this as my start point. I'm going to identify my midpoint right here of this arc as my end point of my dimension. Drag it to where I want to go. Left click to drop it off. Now if I want to keep going I could. Maybe I want to go to this end point. But you'll notice on this tool here it's going from the very beginning point that I selected for my first dimension. If I would have used this other tool right here that says arc size, it would have started from this point, placed the next dimension. But on this one here, for the arc stack, it always goes from that beginning point, kind of like a pivot point, to base all my other dimensions off of. So I'll snap to this endpoint right here. Like I said, if I, if I want to, I could keep going, but I'm going to right click the end of the tool on this example. And now we have those two dimensions placed out there. So that's your arc size dimension option in your angular dimensioning tools. We showed you all these other tools through here, how they worked. One situation that we kind of have common questions on this one here, at least with the dimension arc size, is a lot of times they don't want the angle portion of it. They want to know the length of it. And to do that, you would simply just come up to your, your dimension style and click on your browse button. And underneath your units option, you'll see an angle format. If you come in here and change that from angle to length, the next time you try to dimension one of your arcs, it'll show the length versus the angle. So I'll come out here and just remove these two. I'll go back to my dimension tools. And now this time, I'll just use my arc size. Identify this as my start point. I'll identify this one as my end point. Drag it up. Left click to place it. And I'll just go to this end point right here to place another one. And I'll right click to reset it once I'm done. And now we have those dimensions placed out there. So instead of it being an angle now, you'll see it as a length. So that's the angle dimensioning tools and how they work and how they operate.